Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is March 16th, 2017, and this is our episode number 107. Today we'll look at a company called BR Malls, or BR Malls. Uh, I've been meaning to open the main website for BR Malls for uh, actually a few minutes, and it's not opening. Uh, and, well, there it goes. And uh, BR Malls builds and manages a number of shopping malls all over Brazil. As you can see here, uh, it's a fair number of malls. Let me see if they own any I can recognize in my hometown of Rio. Uh, apparently not. So uh, I'm seeing here many malls in mid-sized cities, some in Sao Paulo, the largest city in South America. Oh yeah, one in Rio here. Uh, anyway, a, a number of shopping malls that are, are well known, uh, even though BR Malls is probably not the largest shopping mall manager in Brazil. Uh, so uh, this website was really uh, acting up a little bit. So before I started recording, I downloaded uh, 2016, the DFP, the, the equivalent to an American 10K for 2016. And here it is. Also, I opened our spreadsheet. And let's find the animals here. So here it is. Uh, and we do have earnings for uh, all the way to 2016 here. And uh, so uh, I'm just going to organize this because I was doing a, a more messy uh, thing in many regards here. So first, uh, I am going to add simple numbers for years here I made a mistake here but no one no problem there there you go and now we can do this copy much cleaner. I was using two rows for liabilities and debt, one each, and later I inaugurated a, a column just for liabilities, a column for liabilities to equity, so uh, I'm abandoning this, but this would be here, and liabilities to equity would be here so we will update this in a second so these uh, temporary projected earnings should go here and now we can delete that row and okay so we have a much cleaner uh, list which we need to update now so let's go for it as always with this kind of company with most kinds of companies uh, I know how to analyze a little bit of we start by taking a look at its debt situation so here's the DFP and we use debt to equity to get a first glimpse at the debt situation so we have controlling and consolidated so net equity is nine three six nine net equity nine three six nine so liabilities will be 
current, so 835, plus non current, 8458. So 9293. So immediately you're able to see the liabilities is almost 1 here, and indeed the formula confirms that. And onwards to debt as such. So to find debt, we need to scan lines here. So empréstimos uh, e financiamentos means loans and financing. So that's 582. Taxes, salaries, dividends to pay, taxes and contributions, client prepayments, uh, other uh, obligations to pay for acquiring a mall. Deferred uh, revenues, derivative instruments. Yeah, it's tricked to sense that this is the only line for debt. And... All right, so we can add impressions and financiamentos here, which will come up to <clears throat> 4198. And I do see here uh, loans by. Uh, associated companies or something like that, which is another nine, another thir 14. Okay, so 4794. So you can see dead here looks larger, and so it comes up to 0 0.51. And one of the most important rules of thumb here is to try to find companies from 0 to 0 0.5 uh, with debt to equity. That's a safe uh, spectrum. Uh, and here we're just above it. But let's keep uh, looking at other aspects, especially because now we are... Um, Uh, looking at the yearly reports, so it's a good opportunity to take a more thorough look at every metric here. So current ratio is: will this company be solvent this year? So the current assets divided by the current liabilities is that safe? So like if you have 1.5 times uh, current assets as you have li current liabilities. You should be safe. That's the rule of thumb there, 1.5. So 978 divided by 835. So 1.17. Not very safe there. So if they're not in dire straights either but it's not like a shiny number uh, and I mean of course we're going through and coming out of a very severe financial crisis here so uh, you know reality affects these numbers for sure um, <clears throat> I'm also going to do one thing here. If you see the market cap, this is from the third quarter. And this reflects what happened in, in the end of 2016 much better than right now because, okay, we got the earnings, we got the results recently, but the market cap, this market cap was more realistic for, say, January 1st. And so, but we need to update the earnings here. So we scroll down and we can see uh, they got a profit here of 20, uh, 215. All right. So, one other thing we need to make sure is that our average. It's contemplating the right things and it's not you see so eight and mm, this seems right so we have ten entries here 
Also, I see a discrepancy. So for 2015, I see a profit of five here, while here, let's see. Oh, I see. Well, for, for the longest time, I, I've been hesitating between controlling and consolidated. And recently, I decided to st stick with consolidated. Uh, in my naive assessment, it makes sense because you're looking at a consolidated statement of everything the company owns. I may be totally wrong here, and if I am, let me know. But the reality is uh, the profit here was 66. So perhaps it would be in intelligent to come back and, and see all these years and make sure we're looking at consistent data be very very important so all right so what about these numbers uh, so far we have a an, an unadjusted um, PE 10 of 1199 so this means that it would take uh, 12 years for you to recoup your investment if you were to draw the profits from the company uh, and this makes a lot of assumptions right uh, I, I'm not going to go into that right now but try to read up on PE 10 or CAPE CAPE and the implications of that or watch past episodes in, in some uh, in the first episodes about P 10 I kind of uh, articulate my understanding of that. So now we do have a formula for adjusting all these numbers for inflation, which is very, very, I should stop saying very, very, like I'm sounding like a Donald Trump. But anyway, uh, it's easy. So we can do sum, and we will multiply the earnings by inflation adjustments, so this sheet. And I have it already there. Exclamation mark. B1, which is the cell with the inflation adjustments from 2016. So, of course, this is a factor of one. But the magic here, and really awesome, is that we can copy that and it knows it should take this one should use this and then b2 this and uh, this and then b3 this and then b4 and so okay it's done and now we can copy this earnings from here and it's smart enough to know that we're really referring to this and finally we do the p10 which is the market cap uh, divided by the average earnings but this time adjusted for inflation so we do a sum of market cap divided by the earnings and it comes down to 8.64 but uh, the current market cap has moved this is not up to date so we open a new tab BR malls market cap and Google gives us a pretty dependable number right there so the market cap here is 9.36 so you can see it's gone up by a lot and it, it has okay uh, Last year, uh, the Bovispa index, uh, which is a, our main index here, went up by 39%. And you will see things moving up quite fast. And this is certainly the case here. So, 11.81 here is, is not a terrible number at all. I, I, I'm sure almost all uh, real investors in the United States uh, would look at a number such as this with envy in terms of opportunity so 
Yeah, we have many okay opportunities in Brazil right now, and that's the reality. Uh, and if you look at the net equity, it's selling for for its net equity, right? You can buy this company by for one times net equity. So another reason for say American investors to really envy Brazilian investors or to guess what invest in Brazilian companies and uh, we uh, should take the opportunity here to look at uh, free cash flow to at least for this year so scrolling down all right so here's cash flow and I'm doing a possibly very naive math here but it would be you take the operating cash flow so fluxo de caixa generated by the operations and so that's 787 and you subtract the investing activities yeah and here we must be really uh, sure this is a uh, a negative sometimes this is a positive uh, but it says here cash flow used in the investing activities so minus 147 so 640 so as you can see a very different number than the earnings of 25 of 215 um, all right I think we've covered a lot of ground here with the animals for one episode and the initial conclusion is a company with a barely acceptable or actually a barely unacceptable to be honest debt in terms of debt to equity uh, if you look at cash flow to debt it's not very good because you would need, say, it's 640, right? You would need, I don't know, seven of these earnings to, or actually eight of these earnings. Yeah, seven to eight of these uh, year's earnings to pay back your debt. So that seems like a lot. Yeah, but in terms of price, it's not totally terrible. Um, so I think I'll stop uh, Behemoth here and not go any further just so we can continue uh, broadening our, our coverage of companies. But Behemoth, I think if you, if you like the business, I would keep an eye on this and see where it goes. You know, understand the debt history, understand the conditions of this debt. Uh, we do know these past two years were really terrible. So we really do have two uh, severe bear markets being considered here in the in the P10, right? So you have 07 and 08, and now uh, 15 and 16, which were, were very extremely rough years. So, so there, there could be some uh, adjustments uh, made here for the optimistic people out there. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't watched any past episodes, we have 106 more. And I'll see you in future episodes as well. Have a great day. Bye-bye.